So, Gary. Yes, I'm here. You, you did it again. You you went dark. You're always so dark. Why can't you lighten it up a bit? Always yeah, with the sturm and drang in your dark, dark, depressing films. Dark, depressing films. Well, some people, you know, do what uh, is totally real, and some people do the worst that are real. I like to do the positive. I like to say... I like to do what we hope it to be some days. You know, Happy Days was a fantasy. That's not a real family, but I thought maybe it could be. Some people believe it could be. I didn't have that family, but I do believe it can be. Things can work out. That's what I do for a living. And you're not going to do a, like a film called Mother's Day that's a horror film and have a woman in an apron with a machete or something. You've got to make it happy, right? Well, there can be a horror's day, Mother's Day, but I, I, I did a movie called Nothing in Common. It was kind of a salute to my father, and this was to my mother. I figured something for moms. Mom's a very hard job. I don't know, I don't know how, what kind of day you're having, but I came from Little League with my grandchild and my wife, and we celebrated Mother's Day in the baseball stands. That was our Mother's Day, but it's a good day for everybody. Now, nothing in common was a bit on the dark side for people who think you don't do dark. You did dark. It was a, ultimately an upbeat film, but it was a pretty... Well, we do a little bit. We, nothing in common got great reviews made $4, but it still plays, so you never know what you can do. We did The Other Sister, which was my serious uh, subject of, uh, you know, a mentally challenged child and how uh, money doesn't help and certain instances, particularly in health. But uh, we, you want to mention Exit to Eden, my worst picture? There's <laughs> one, one review, one dollar. It was just... A, I would mention you it, but try I didn't everything. see it, so I don't know. No, you try it all. I'll catch up with it on Netflix. So, so this is now the third picture in what has been referred to as the Gary Marshall Holiday Franchise which started with Valentine's Day, and then you did New Year's Eve, and now you've got Mother's Day. So when you did Valentine's Day, was there thought that you would continue in this holiday motif, or was it just one thing after the next without a plan to get Well, everybody, you know, this business looks for franchises, any kind of franchise, and I don't do flying people very well, and I don't blow things up so good, so... <laughs> We thought holiday, there yeah, we try that. But no, Valentine's Day did very, very well, and uh, New Year's Eve did okay. And oddly enough, New Year's Eve made a, I shouldn't say, made a lot of money in Europe. And that's why they said, well, let's go. Is, is Mother's Day in Europe and Asia? And somebody said, yeah. So that's what we did. But I think this is the last one. Yeah. <laughs> I have others. Uh, coming up. I I seriously don't know how to make Arbor Day funny. I don't know how to make trees hilarious. Very hard. Far be it from me to give you any unsolicited <laughs> advice, but let me give you one thought uh, just between us, is that if you're looking for a new direction, the Jewish holidays, you can do Purim, Sukkot, Tu B'Shvat. I was going to do Sukkot, which Sukkot? is part of yeah. this. Say an ain't and these days. Think, think of the Mayo. Might be good. You know, <laughs> diversity is big now. So uh, I always use Hector Alessandro. That's my diversity. <laughs> no. no let's talk. I actually was going to get to that later, but you brought up you Hector now. get to anything Well, go want, wherever we want. I've never seen a credit before that said, and as always... Hector Elizondo. Tell me, because he has been in every one of your pictures. Tell uh, me how that tradition started and what he brings to the set and to you. Personally. Well, I produced and written other movies, but I directed 18 movies, and Hector's been in all 18. Uh, we go to his house. He has a, they say he does wonderful characters, so many. Well, he does, but he has so many toupees. We go to his house, we look at all the toupees, he has them lined up, and he says, how about this one? Okay, that's the character. Now we'll find a place, and he comes. But he is an actor, and uh, sometimes a direct, as a director, you know, a lot of, it's a hard job. And sometimes uh, actors are bothered by something, and if there's a big problem, I always have Hector talk to the actor, it's like one actor talking to the other, and it's like having a friend at a court with you on the picture. And uh, 
We play ball together, we play basketball, now we play senior softball, a whole other subject. You know senior softball, any of you? Senior softball is great. If you hit a double, they let you take a nap. It's really, I won't do my act, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to check my notes. Who said this? Michael Eisner said about you, he said, Gary Marshall doesn't direct a movie. He hosts He hosts a movie. Now, does this imply that along with the, just the, the responsibilities of making the day on the set that you like a family party atmosphere? You want people to have a good time. Is that the... Well, I do... Uh you know, people say, what's your favorite movie? Well, I, I don't have that. I try to make every... Uh, a film is a you know it's about a year of your life. Every film have something that you can enjoy, whether it's a hit, it's a miss, who knows? But you have a good time doing it. So I've always had a totally open set. You can bring your relatives on the set. I'll say hello to your mother. I'll say hello to your uncle Jerry, who'll hand me a script. We have a place we put scripts, <laughs> and uh, just to be uh, so everybody's welcome. And I really, uh, so you worry between action and cut. I worry as much about before action and after cut. What are the actors doing? What kind of mood? And we had these big soccer sequences. And before the big sequence we played with Jake and Sedaskis brought his little boy, two-year-old Otis. I'm running up and down the soccer field with Otis and me and Jason. And uh, he did a good job in that scene. He had lived some stuff, and it was great. So I like it to be a, a, a friendly place and people feel comfortable, and very often they act better. Yeah, if you're having a good time in any job, it helps, right? Yeah, well, and I, as I said, I had a lot of... Uh, some of the relatives on the movie are mine. Yeah, so A lot of them. <laughs> no, no, me. I have six grandchildren. What are you going to do? <laughs> so uh, they won't go past. But uh, no, I used a lot of kids in this movie, so we had a lot of uh, different kind of atmosphere around the set to have fun. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that this script originally, the first draft of the script was by a first-time writer named Lily Hollander. And then your usual people went to work on the script and, and, and revised and made it more of a Gary Marshall film. I want to know, even though this is the Director's Guild, in this case, uh -oh. writing, writing dovetails into directing. We so I want to hear mention about... mention that? Yeah. Writing. I want, I'm in the Writer's Guild, too. Uh, but they the all know that the script And the Musicians system. Union, local radio, too. But... Uh, Yes, what I went this into is, this writing well, business. Well, I, I just want to, I assume this is sort of a, a holdover from your television days where you'd have a writer's room and people would contribute ideas and improve the script. Is, does it work like, what's the process? Well, it's uh, not so much my idea, it's the studio idea. It's always, let's get so-and-so. Uh, I did a movie called Frankie and Johnny uh, based on a play written by Terrence McNally. And as soon as I say, I do, okay, we'll get Bellman and Gitzman, they'll do the rewrite. I, I don't know them, but they, I said, what about Terrence McNally? He, you know, he wrote the play. They said, oh, he don't know how to write a screenplay. And I must say, I did say, I said, well, I can't do it unless he has first shot at the screenplay, which he did, and he did such a good job. He's the only credit on that screenplay. Same thing happened on Pretty Woman. J.F. Lawton wrote a screenplay. I fixed it a little, but he did the first rewrite. But the, 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 so the, the credited writers on the film, was it a group thing with everybody in the room or did different people take shots at different oh, times? Oh, no, no. TV, I was a showrunner for 12 years. You sit at the head of a table, there's 10 writers, they're all talking at once and you become, if they get nothing, you've got to come up with it. But most of the time I just picked that guy, that guy. I mean, that's how Sid Caesar did it in the old you didn't Picking, but not on a movie. We have a writer. Then another team came in, uh, Matt Walker and Tommy Hines, both who have been my punch-up writers over the years. They have got, first time they got credit. And another girl, Anya, who really came in and helped 
the, the last part. It's nice when you have a movie called Valentine's Day and Mother's Day that there's a woman involved. You know, it's nice to have that. So I bring in a lot of women to help me behind the scenes and in, in, in the movie. Now, you, you I, I know this about you, is that you can, casting is not difficult for you as far as getting actors because you make a phone call and you say, uh, hi, Julie, it's Gary. I'm going to do a film called Mother's Day, and it'll be funny, and they say, I'll be there. So so you're able to put together these A-list ensemble cast. But in this case, was there a first one to sign on, and then the others came on, or what order what did you What you just said is a myth. I don't know everybody's numbers, <laughs> but I've done a few pictures with Julia. And again, the truth, because the director, because you tell the truth, we're sitting at the... I wrote a... All my kids play ball, so I'm at a little league game, and next to me, into the stands, comes Julia Roberts. Her kid's playing opposite my kid, and we talk, hello, how are you? We never talk business between innings. That's a rule of baseball. You don't do business between innings. But after the game was over, she said, what are you doing? I said, Mother's Day, I think, and she said, I'm a mother, and I said, well... I don't know, you want to read? And she says, yeah. And then we don't do that thing with your group people call, my people. I get the script out of the trunk of my car. I go to a house. I shove it in the mailbox myself. She reads it, calls me. Hello, yeah, that one part I could do. All right, good, fine. So that was it. There was no uh, phone calls, hello, I'm doing a movie. No, we just run into each other. And then, you know, I do, I went, uh, I learned to beg. One of the things I did learn in television is begging. Please come and do another year and please do this. So I meet people and I, uh, Jennifer Anderson, I never worked with, I adored her, always on Friends. And uh, I went to her house and we talked and, uh, to, uh, you know, convinced her, hopefully you'll do the part. And she had read the script and, and it works. She says, you know, my staff goes home at soon. Uh, I said, I mean, it's like 4 o'clock. I said, oh, I don't want anything to eat. And she says, no, no, I'm, I'm not offering you food. My kitchen staff wants to meet you. So I literally went in the kitchen, all these people, there were six or seven people, the garden, I'm taking pictures, I'm hugging people and smiling. They all know my TV shows. They all grew up on them. And uh, so uh, when I left, I said, I hope you do the picture, but ask your kitchen staff what they think. They may say something. So her kitchen staff got her into the picture. I, I don't know. Kate Hudson, I know a long time. I you do worked my not Hudson. only with her, but with her mother, too. Yeah, can I do my quick Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson was literally seven and a half years old on my lap when we did the movie Overboard, and we would yell, action for mommy, go, oh, you say action, action. That's the way we did it, and on Mother's Day, her five-year-old, Bing, was on my lap, a boy, and we yelled, action to mommy. It's the so, circle of life. Circles of life, so there's no calls you run in and you say, and, but what's more exciting for me is, uh, to see new people, you know, this Jack Whitehall, this Britt Robinson's a common girl, that young girl there. And then I always have a couple of young 21-year-olds uh, in the picture. You know why? Because I'm, uh, I'm a little older, uh, and I don't know all these things. Uh, LOL, I finally got recently, <laughs> but I didn't even know what the hell Snapchat was. I heard... Uh, Kate say it, and I went over to one of the kids and said, what's Snapchat? Was that funny, what she said? Yes, and they explained it to me. It was good. I ran back. Kate, what a great line. I wish I thought of it. I wish I didn't know what she's talking about. But that's how you keep up. I know, You notice how Skype, and I don't want you to think because I run an open set, I, I'm not into film. This picture, the first time I ever shot with drones. We had drone shots. I didn't quite understand what a drone was. But again, my son shoots all the second unit, and he's a, an expert, technically, and uh, he knows everything. So we do try to make it filmic. 
And you try to direct seven stars in that kitchen scene all talking at once. Not so easy, but uh, I think between making the film, making sure you, your cast and the you know, stars are stars, you gotta make them comfortable. And they know that if they don't like a line or a line don't fit, uh, Neil Simon taught me, a line will fit any mouth. What I write fits any mouth. Didn't turn out that way, it seems. So now I say, what's the matter? And if there's something I truly I say, I'll stay up all night tonight and get you a, a better speech or a better line. But if they ever say, uh, the lamp in my trail is not good or the air can, I, I don't speak, I point. I don't do lamps. I You delegate. You do the lamps, everybody. You know how many producers were on this film? My first uh, independent, 21, 21 producers. This is the independent world. So, so now what, uh, so the other holiday films, for that matter, all your pictures have been studio pictures. Yeah. How is it, what is it about the genesis of this that this went the independent route rather than? Well, this is hard, independent filmmaking. I had done one years ago, but this is a whole other deal. I must thank uh, the Directors Guild, very much. There was a big calamity. They didn't have time to schedule. They, they had to get a city to shoot. We shot this in Atlanta. So Rob edited the picture as we went. So on the last day of shooting, he had the assemblage together and I had watched it. And uh, it helps when I believe in editing as you go along, because there's a a little bit of a, not a, maybe you saw it in the film, there's kind of a what the hell did he do that for a moment in this picture. There's a thing where we were going so fast that we shot a scene in the wrong order. And after we saw the assemblage, we said, no, that scene don't go here, it goes here. So I said, well, can we reshoot it? There's no money to reshoot it. So I said, well, she has the wrong costume on. They said, well, you'll figure a way. So if you notice in the film, there's a scene where suddenly the sister spills water on Kate Hudson, and she goes in the other room and takes off a blouse. Not bad, I must say. She looks pretty good. But I didn't do that for a sexy reason at all. I had to get her out of that costume to put on the other costume because the scene right there is the scene. We had shot weeks ago and, and she had a match. So you have to make the adjustments and I suggest if you're doing independent, edit as you go in case you make a mistake. You also, when, go you, back. when you're saying when that error was discovered, you were still shooting, which allowed you to do the pickup, correct? Yeah, I'm still it wasn't shooting, like you but I'm two weeks from there. So luckily it was only two people and uh, this very good kid, Asif, uh, from Comedy Central, was married to her and a very funny guy, and so we we picked it up. But that was the scene that I shot her in. So everything goes wrong, but, you know, you get paid not for coming here and speaking to these nice people. You get paid for when everything's wrong, they stare at you and say, what are we going to do now, Gary? <laughs> and I got to think of something. Um. So let me. I, I can count on the fingers of one hand. Maybe there's there's you and there's uh, Woody and there's Clint Eastwood, the guys who have crossed over eighty. I don't even know if Clint's still directing. Maybe he's not directing anymore. But who are still allowed to direct? We're what, still allowed. You're yes. still allowed. So so, it, it, what is what is the key to staying in the loop, or do you even think in those terms? You just go picture to picture. You. Have you have you ever thought, uh, you know, how retire? do you stay? How, not retire, because I know you better than that. But just to, <laughs> st to, to stay current. And to, I mean, there's new technology now. You're working digitally and all that. Is there much of an adjustment with that? Or is that just... Well, I you mean, time? does age make it harder? Well, yeah, you get a little tired. Not to mention so. the energy of it being... The energy the is That's important. Also. But it's so exciting when you meet, uh, you know, you meet stars are coming to work and, uh, you know, and, you, you know, they're quite talented. So they do a scene and, uh, you know, I don't, I never do negative. Uh, you know, they, there's a long pause in between some 
seen uh, Julia was doing, I said, that, that pause, you know, I wrote a pilot during that pause, Julia, <laughs> and I have enough pilots. I don't need another pilot. And then we let's do it again. We do it again. Suddenly there was no pause. So, you know, I come in backwards because that has always worked for me. But I, I do enjoy working with new talented people and uh, with established people. I think that keeps me going. But you must hang out with, you must have young people in your life. We were, were blessed, both my sister and I, that uh, my son Scott, uh, you know, Penny and I didn't go to film school. We went to college, but we still do this, and uh, we don't know the names of every lens, but my son, Scott, does, and he does all the second year for her and me, and uh, we stay up technically on it. Energy, I just think, uh, for some reason, I get energy from young people and uh, people who are excited about the project and, and doing the scenes. The, people always say, what's the difference between Julia now when when we started, Julia and I, she was 19, actually, and then she had her 21st birthday during Pretty Woman. But the difference is now is we both like to go home. Yeah. <laughs> she has a cell phone. That takes up a little time. But at the end of the day, we really want to get the work done because she's got three kids, a nice family, a nice husband, and I, I have six grandchildren I have to go and check on. So that has given me a lot of energy that I know uh, uh, I shouldn't just stay there all night because four o'clock in the morning when you shoot, it, it's, uh, it is tiring, but four o'clock, my hint is, 4 o'clock, if you shoot, if it's warm, it's okay. If it's cold, like on New Year's Eve, 4 o'clock, freezing. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of night shoots. Too, oh, a lot right? of nights. It was uh, a thousand extras this way, a thousand extras that way. But each uh, job has its own thing. But I, I, I like the challenges rather than, uh, what am I going to sit on a park bench and talk about... Uh, once I did me and the chimp, it <laughs> failed. I don't want to talk about those days. <laughs> no, I think the energy is comes from the other people I'm with. Now, you brought up me and the chimp. And let me ask yes. you something. Now, uh, because that show starred Ted Bessel and a monkey. Right. Now, here, here's something that I've always heard, you can confirm, is that the original title was going, going to be grammatically correct. The Chimp and I, yes. but Ted Bessel said he did not want to take second credit under the monkey. Is that right? That was a very true story, but it was all my fault. I cast the wrong chimp. I don't, I don't never cast chimps before. They brought in these monkeys. I, I, that, that one, that one was bad. You know, I'd say action, he'd run up in the rafters and we'd all sit for a half hour while they try to get him down. Not funny and not behaving well, this chimp. We try to replace him. There's some the pet people get after you. Yeah. Why would you replace him? What did he do wrong? <laughs> I'm trying to make a show. I don't know, lady. But uh, it's true. Uh, we yep. had, that was a mistake. Peter will come down on you if you hurt the chimp's feelings. You have to be careful about that. Peter? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's, oh it's, Peter, not yeah, the Pete, guy, the company. No, no, Peter, Peter with the Brooklyn accent, Peter. No, no, no I, Peter, you saw yeah. no animals were hurt in this picture. And only no, no, a couple of I animals. have dogs, I have animals. Uh, it's just that I, I think that so many, I mean, you're so trying so hard to be politically correct and this and that, that it really is uh, sometimes uh, is difficult in the creative process. Uh, you know, um, I... For a moment, I take the high road for a moment. I know, I studied, I went to school, and, uh, you know, um, there was Plato and Socrates, Aristotle. I read the poetics, and the poetics Aristotle wrote before we were ever here. You need a beginning, middle, and end. And that's what I have always learned. Plato wanted the descriptions. I think he wanted to be a director, but... and. <laughs> Who knows? Socrates taught them all, and and he 
Actually, see, I, I do enlightenment. Socrates had a bad wife who was hocking him why he couldn't make a living as a philosopher. So he didn't like the whole process of entertainment. He liked going off himself. Aristotle, I still believe a beginning, middle, and end is a part of it, even if I'm doing four stories. I, so Plato's wife was saying, why don't you get a real job? You're hanging yes, out in your underwear. Yes, that's exactly right. Read, you'll see. It's true. I totally the three of them were going to form a trio and sing, but it wasn't the time. I still maintain Aristotle said the Greek chorus it should be in every show because that's where he put his relatives. That's what was the original nepotism, was the Greek chorus. Honestly, you can look it up. Go ahead. What, I heard something about uh, what ultimately were the two hardest things about making this picture. What were the two hardest things about making Mother's Day? The, the two hardest things was the three-day post. I had my first cut in three weeks, I'm sorry, three-week post, and changing this uh, spilling water on a girl for no reason. We tried to kill, kid around that there were sisters who kidded around, but I never totally bought it. But that's what helped to okay. make it make sense. Because, you know, people write everything. I don't, somebody wrote about this, uh, reviews I never particularly get, but they write things like, most of the scenes with the baby were in the bar. Don't these people ever have, you know, people work. Kids are young, they work. They work in bars and restaurants. What has that got to do with filmmaking? But these are the things you, I don't worry about them, but when I read them, I'm startled. But I would say the hardest thing was making it with 21 producers, always there, saying, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> How is it how's going? It going? <laughs> which is, uh, which is uh, yeah, code for something else, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> no, but uh, truly, it used to be, and in Broadway too, you used to have a guy with a lot of money and he would invest in it because he wanted to literally meet Julia Roberts and take a picture with her. That was the old business, no more. Now there's people who invest in money and they, they have a cousin, they have a friend who wants to be in the picture. And that's how sometimes you put the money together. And uh, they're not bad, it's just it's a different way of uh, taking care of the finances of a film. We're going to wrap it up in just a minute. There, there's one thing I want to ask you about because it was something I heard that I thought was very amusing, which is that uh, a lot of directors do not want the writers on the set. It's like you, you did your thing, go away. And then there are the directors that welcome the writers. You're one of those. Now I heard from an, from one of the writers that they are they are encouraged and they're welcome to give you notes on the set if they think of something that might improve a scene. They can give you. So that some of the some of the writers will write down little notes and, and hand it to you, and they can tell whether you like it or not by where you put the note. Can you describe that? That's true. That well, there's no time to chat. They just hand me pieces of paper, and I try. A, I got a system before. If I think it's got possibilities. I put it up in this pocket or this pocket. If it's no good, I put it in this pocket or the back pocket so they know right away. And once in a while, they'll say, Gary, take it out of this pocket. That's <laughs> what she's worrying about. And it might take a look. But mostly, if it's, if it's down here, no. No, I am basically, I started as a writer. And so, you know, I, I must confess, I love directing. I think... Uh, Filmmaking is such a, a, a interesting and fascinating the way you do it and how sometimes it evolves. I know magic happens. In the thing I was trying, you saw the soccer scene. I tried to get that kid. I said, come out and kick the ball. She couldn't kick it. She missed it three times. It was funny. And they wanted to cut. I said, no, let her keep kicking. We'll find a way. And, and mostly uh, the other thing is I also, you can't make a picture anymore. So the hardest thing now in difficulty is you gotta make the movie story, then you gotta make the trailer. 
and then you got to make the record album all at the same time. So it gets much more difficult. And I would say that's more trying on, on age than anything else. But I always have writers on the set because I like to, uh, to be open to doing something better. And once in a while, there comes something better or something obviously doesn't work. And uh, let's get something better and, and they can help you. And I, I use... Uh, Women writers, men writers, I have different people. I never have a bunch. I only have two, the most. And I lately, I tried to pick writers, pardon me, who could also act. <laughs> so you get a double for it. One of the writers of the screenplay was the guy who played the clown in here, a very good writer, also an actor. So, And the other guy was an announcer or something. So I, it's true, I do take notes. And we do make changes because not just to, uh, I hate to make them just to make them. A lot of times it's just different, not better. I don't like those kind of like Different, not better is no good. But sometimes they'll come up with something. And I think uh, always you, if you say, this is exactly how it does in comedy, it doesn't work in comedy. But uh, be open to everybody's thoughts, you know, when the, People and and about talent and everything. Uh, not to like that, but they always, you know, I like girls. I had all the girls here, that, and I found this one, that one. But the guy who played the father in this movie is the father of Chris Pine, and I knew Chris Pine when he was this little, and we put him in Princess Diaries. But I needed the father. He came in. So it's a lot of times you can really find somebody that happens, and sometimes it's just magic. Anybody could have found Robin Williams if they knew who he was. Nobody knew who he was. I found him. But I think that that is the the part. They know when they work for me that I will try to make it better and better as we go. And uh, that's why I think a lot of actors like to try it. They know, uh, you know, rarely does anybody die in my movies, so they'll come and they'll have a kind time. I don't think there's really anything wrong with uplifting. You, know, you could go home and say, oh, that was nice. Uh, I didn't know that thing he was talking about Aristotle, but the movie made me happy. <laughs> I got the signal to wrap it up, so I want to wrap it up this way for, for up-and-coming uh, directors in the audience, if anyone's just starting out. The four rules are uh, begging, uh, little league games, keep scripts in your trunk, and good notes in your breast pocket, lousy notes in the pants pocket. Does that sum it up pretty good? There's directing information. There you have it. Thank direction. you, Gary Marshall, for Mother's Thank Day. Thank you. And happy A Mother's pleasure. Day to all of you mothers. Thank you for spending Mother's Day here. Thank you, Mr. Robert here, Robert Wyden.